I wasn't just trying to scream my nerves out. I actually came here to remind you of the first lesson we learn in life. When you're born, you need to show you're alive, or the doctor will give you a little slap. You can't grab life unless you start with a big scream. My name is Noura. And I come from a small city right in the middle of Syria, called Homs. In my family, we say Hom Syria is the heart of the world, and that Homs is the heart of Syria, and normally it beats with laughter. Homsi people are famous of their loud laughs and ability to face everything with a smile. But recently, that laugh has been silenced. I want you to imagine the entire population of Denmark. We're talking about six million, forced to leave their homes, keep moving constantly, not knowing when they will be kicked out or if they will sleep on the street the next day. Unfortunately, this is the life of over six million Syrian people inside Syria. The UN has estimated that since March 2011, over 190,000 people have been killed. Over three millions registered as refugees, half of them are women. Another report said that until November 2013, over 6,000 Syrian women have been raped during the conflict. The numbers I actually expected to be way higher. Since women in this part of the world are silenced, are voiceless. So, why did I come here? I came here to scream, to grab life, to remind you of those who can't. In my life, I try to release myself and women around me not only from verbal and physical abuse, not only from the media, but the public itself. The media is supported by laws, showing women in a certain way. Like when it's normal, if a rapist marries his victim, he can go free. If a woman remarries after being divorced, she loses the right of keeping her children. If a father killed his daughter in the name of honor, the worst thing that can happen is that he spent really short time in jail, and that's it. Many women are silenced. Not only in Syria, but many parts of the world. In a society that teaches girls to be violated and boys to be violators, screams are silenced. I was so excited to be here. When I told my family and friends that I'm giving a TED Talk, most of them were happy, but some said, do not do it. Why even talk about women? Is it the right time, or is it going to make any change? And the one I really hated was, you're making Syrian women look weak. OK, why women? Of course, women, because it's a shame that it's 2014 and we're still fighting for this. We're still fighting to be heard and not be violated. Is it the right time? It's about time, and it has been for a long, long time. You cannot liberate a country without liberating women. You cannot educate a country without educating women. If we don't in include women now, then when? When it's too late? <laughs> or ever? <laughs> and am I making Syrian women look weak? Oh, hell no. 
Because true strength is to dare to scream and help others to do the same, help others to be heard. After all, I came here to scream. I came here to grab life. But recently, I spent the whole year not able to scream or talk about my experience. Syria for me was death, ruins, and blood. Syria for me was building falling. Syria for me was a stupid reporter telling me that my home, where I had my first steps, been bombed, or I lost a friend or a family member. I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress syndrome. I lost my memory. I couldn't remember Syria before 2011. As the building crumbled, so did my memory. <sighs> the only thing I could remember were the people. The people who became numbers and their bane just a breaking news at the bottom of my screen. I had just arrived in Denmark when we lost our house in 2012. The first sentence my dad said to me after being rescued, you are the only hope left. Yeah. Many Syrian women are the only hope left. And hope is the only thing they have. I was a newlywed. Coming to the land of my love, coming to Denmark. I already knew back then that I lost a lot of my rights back in Syria just because I'm a woman and the man I love has a different country in his passport. For an entire year, I was stateless, neither Syrian or a Dane. I wasn't even welcome in Syria. Some Syrians sent me, sent me hate messages telling me to not speak my mind. What is my being compared to theirs? They said, hey you, sitting outside, keep silent. Suddenly all the dreams and energy of, an early, of a newlywed in her early 20s were gone. And I couldn't say a word. I lost my inner voice while losing my home. Not the sound of my voice, but the ability to be free, the ability to be myself. I felt like I was floating in nowhere. The immigration service didn't allow me to be in Denmark, and I wasn't welcome in Syria. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't say a word. I didn't know if I would ever stand up again. I felt like there was a monster grabbing my mouth with its clothes and taking my voice away. That monster even haunted me in my dreams. I couldn't even dream to scream. Until I discovered that I cannot do anything. Until I faced the ugly truth. I'm weak. Weaker, weaker than I thought. But maybe that weakness is the strongest thing about me. I'm weak. But I'm strong enough to accept it. I'm weak, but I'm brave enough to face it. I'm humble enough to share it. So I screamed. I screamed not only with words, but with work. I volunteered on organizations that aim to teach women and children what violence actually is. There have been some women that have been threatened or beaten by their husbands, and they didn't consider that as violence. Just everyday life. 
And it's not supposed to be like that. I was shocked. I was shocked that they considered that normal. Recently, I co-founded a startup. A startup fights for a better place for all women and children all over the world. We fight for women and children because those are who are often suppressed and rarely heard. And just like my city, I try to fight with a smile. But you know what? So what? It's just another problem in that crazy part of the world. Why should we care? The simple answer is because we can. We can be their voice. You can remind them that there are other people that are getting killed just because they dared to scream. You can remind them that in the time of conflicts, men are not the only ones in the front line. And women are not just losing their men. Trust me, we have kind of strange kind of equality in Syria. We get killed as much as men. We get arrested as much as men. We lose as much as men. But we fight as much as men. But women pay more. Because in Syria and many parts of this world, women hold the responsibility of the honor. Not only the honor of their families, but also the honor of the society and the country. And it's time. It's time to release their responsibility off of their shoulders. Because in the time of poverty and explosion of weapons, violence produces more violence, and the first victims are women. But violence against women is not a problem in another country. It's much closer. One out of three women will be beaten or raped in their lifetime. That's one billion women. One of them could be sitting next to you right now. One of them could be the lady you buy your coffee from every morning. One of them could be the woman you love. One of them could be you. Maybe, maybe you should care because your daughter could be subjected to this if we're not aware of how to, you, to raise our children. They became violators or violated. If you're not aware of violence, you're violently unaware. <laughs> violence against women affected everybody. Everybody is affected by violence against women. Simply because violence against women is violence against humanity. Not only does the media, the public and the society has to stop teaching us how to act. And the laws has to stop telling us what is worth to scream and what is not. Serum women are just like the women in Egypt, in Saudi Arabia, in Iran. Just like the women in Europe and America. They are just like the women in the highest mountain up north to the deepest, deepest valley down south. They just want and deserve to be equal in a world without any forms of violence. So release women out of war. And war out of women. Nobody deserves this. Nobody deserves to be silenced. We all deserve to have a voice. And that voice should be heard. So scream your lungs out, people. And fight. Fight. Like Homs. With a smile. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.